All right, listen up. In today's video, it's just you and me. You and me. We're gonna we're gonna make some love to this camera. So get a little closer. Get a little closer. Oh, ah, too close. All right, back back and back up. Back back up, just a little bit. Uh, wow. Well, what are we gonna talk about? All right, I'm broke. Shit. It is over. It is done. The end of Nintendo Prime is here. F I have your attention now. Hey everyone, this has just been a thing that we need to talk about, right? I did a live stream on this a little bit ago. We talked about the Game Explained situation as well. Yeah, Game Explained is still around. So far, the content they've put out since letting go of their full-time staff has not been anywhere close to the content they were doing before, which is exactly what I said would happen. Game Explained, as we know it, uh, likely doesn't exist anymore. We're there busted out three, four news videos a day and all this stuff. Uh, yeah, that those days are probably in the past. I don't know if they're going to continue with these uh, analysis machine comparison videos. Like the most recent video was something about comparing, gosh, what was it? A really old Mario Kart course to a new version of a Mario Kart course in Mario Kart 8, which feels like a really weird time to drop that content considering that's old news. It's like not relevant today, but whatever, if that's the kind of content they want to put out, I guess that's the content they want to put out, and that's no offense to them, uh, but this really just comes down to the landscape of covering Nintendo in 2024. Look, man, the videos just keep coming up. Like, I wasn't going to make a standalone video on it. I was doing that live stream that I did, I think, last week, Tuesday, and that was going to be it, right? We, 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 we were done, but then RGT85 had to bring me up in his video on this uh, with what the is going on with Nintendo YouTubers. Uh, and then, yeah, I was brought up again by Switch Force, I think, yesterday. Uh, he's talked about this. We see Nintendo Land drop a video yesterday on this as well. In fact, beat em ups, I think, is what really started the whole conversation. And look, you might see more and more Nintendo YouTubers talk about this. You also see some Nintendo YouTubers just not talk about it because. To be honest, not every Nintendo YouTuber is being affected in the same way. Some Nintendo YouTubers just don't feel like they should talk about this because it's about the business side of YouTube, which is something most of us just don't talk about publicly. Now, through my live streams, I've been a bit more public about the business side than most content creators, but in my standard videos here, we just don't really bring it up, right? I'm not here in this video. If you're looking for this video to be like a woe is me and uh, Nintendo Prime is screwed and oh my God, if you don't go and support me at patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime, it's the end of the channel. Ah, that's that's not the kind of video this is. And sorry to any of my haters out there that were maybe hoping that yes, this will be the year that shuts me down. Ha! Don't worry. I've got another Switch 2 rumor video for you tomorrow. Maybe. I actually don't know because I don't actually make up rumors. They happen when they happen. Uh, but still, you know, I'll have more Zelda videos, I'm sure, for Echoes of Wisdom. I'll have more videos uh, for other video games coming out this year, whether it's Mario and Luigi or Jamboree or, heck, maybe some Emeo content if we get something pretty interesting for that. I don't know how much more of that game we're actually going to see because it's such a heavy story-focused game that everything they share about it's kind of like a massive spoiler. So I, I will probably have a launch trailer or something, but I'm actually kind of curious how they're going to market that. It's not like Echoes of Wisdom where they can market all the gameplay and because the gameplay is kind of a create your own idea kind of gameplay like Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, they can kind of show as much of the gameplay they want without it being like super spoilery because there's going to be so much new fascinating ways we can you know find to combine different echoes together and do different things. Uh, like right now we've only ever seen them use kind of like two echoes at once, but yet you could summon multiple. You, you could have like three or four different echo things going on. So anyways, that's neither here nor there. Uh, I'm pretty excited for that game and we're going to continue our Echoes of Wisdom coverage as soon as Nintendo gives us more, right? We just had like a week of advertising. I presume we might get a little bit more, some more screenshots or something, or maybe things are going to die down for a bit. All right, let's get to the Brux, what, what, what this video is really about. Uh, and that is that, yes, uh, it's just going to be you and me. Well, as I said at the beginning, just making love to the camera, not a lot of heavy editing here. 
I know that we are struggling on on uh, YouTube this year. Now, it's weird for me to talk about it because I've only been a full-time YouTuber for about a year and a half, year and eight months. You know, I, I went full-time in November of 2022. And, well, I was full-time on YouTube. What that really just meant is it was my only source of income, but I wasn't making, you know, a full-time salary. I had enough money in savings to kind of float for a little bit. Uh, and I just needed to be making a full-time income by about, I don't know, February, March, April, somewhere in there before I would run out of savings and have to go back to get, as they say, a normal job. And so I decided in doing all of that, that uh, I, I was actually pretty close in 2023 of not being able to do it. I didn't realize Tears of the Kingdom was going to be such a big boon for the channel. And I could say that like sincerely, because hey, I was you know making content for Breath of the Wild back in the day, and outside of like one video, I didn't get like a ton of traction on Breath of the Wild. Uh, I didn't, you know, the the biggest thing I had actually gotten traction for ever was uh, what was it? Uh, 3D All Stars back in 2019, Super Mario 3D All Stars. We got a lot of traction that lasted for about a month, and then it just died off. You know, pretty much. Well, not right after the game came out, but shortly after the game game came out, it died off. So, you know, and that was like a one month boon. Uh, Tears of the Kingdom ended up being a boon that was way bigger than 3D All Stars. Like, yeah, we were getting 50,000, 100,000 views of video back then, but we didn't like explode in subscribers and have our live streams blow up and our podcasts blow up. And not only that, 2019 was weird because YouTube jacked half my revenue that month that 3D All Stars came out, literally saying that I was botting my channel. So, as I was sitting there and started getting more and more views on Tears of the Kingdom content last year, uh, I was in the back of my mind, kind of afraid Nintendo was going to assume it was all bots again. But uh, no, because YouTube had changed from 2019 until, you know, 2023 under the leadership of Susan Wojcicki. And this is where I need to get just a little serious for a moment because uh, Susan is the person who has enabled me to even be a full-time YouTuber. She's the one that convinced Google to even buy YouTube way back in the day. Ran YouTube for a long time. And not every decision was great. I, you know, the dislike button's probably the one that I... Uh, was against the most because, you know, as much as it's supposed to be about making YouTubers feel better about each other, we can literally still see our dislike ratio on the back end. And having talking to several YouTubers, we're all aware what the like to dislike ratio is on every single video we make. Uh, it does knock down a little bit on the public comments. So, like, if you have a video in particular getting, like, say you, you have, like, an 80-20 video, right, where, like, 20% of your audience is disliking, well, because it's not seen publicly, you're not seeing comments constant comments about all the dislikes. Uh, so I guess it did clean up that a little bit, but whatever. Uh, the reason that I bring this up is because, you know, I hit my 100,000 subscribers in April, uh, which, man, that's two months after Susan Wojcicki stepped down in February of 2023. And I just wanted to mention this because I'm very thankful that the opportunity I've had here on YouTube to even make it a career of any sort, uh, because Susan Wojcicki passed away from cancer. And it turned out she was battling cancer about you know eight to six months before she stepped down from YouTube, and it's, so it's probably the reason she was, and she kept it under wraps and was very private about it. It was never stated as a reason for her stepping down, uh, and I believe Neil's doing a decent job so far, although there hasn't really been much to navigate. And um, they're rolling out some features that I'm kind of excited for and not excited for at the same time. Uh, there's apparently a community notes feature coming out that's kind of like X, where uh, certain members in the community can like put notes on videos to like state if it's like fake news or something like that, uh, which is pretty cool. Actually, I kind of, I kind of like that, you know, or clarify if something's a rumor or whatever. I, I don't really know uh, how the community know things going to work. I don't even know if it's going to make it out of its uh, testing phase because right now they're just testing to see if users are going to abuse the system, which this is why I don't think it's ever going to be a fully public community notes thing. It'll just be very select users that don't abuse the system. That's what I hope anyways. If it's a fully public thing, oh boy, we're going to see a lot of trolling, just like we do with the fact that anyone can claim any video for any reason, and then you got to deal with YouTube's whole strike system, and it's just a pain in the ass. Uh, but setting that aside, Nintendo content creators are struggling. Uh, it's no secret. I'm not going to say I didn't foresee it coming. I kind of hoped it went. Uh, Nintendo Switch 2 you know, was rumored to come out holiday of this year for a long time and be revealed in March of this year, and that was sort of supposed to be like carrying the day, right? We went from Zelda to Mario to some filler content right into Switch 2. And instead what happened is, well, guess what? Uh, Switch 2 isn't coming out until the earliest at some point in 2025. I mean, some people think March, that's what the rumors say. But then the rumors weren't correct on the last launch date or the last reveal date. 
But we don't really need rumors for like the system being revealed anymore. Thank gosh that Furukawa has actually come out and told us, hey, it's going to be revealed or there'll be an announcement or something related to the Nintendo Switch successor before the end of this fiscal year. So like ha, we have from the horse's mouth that, yeah, we are expecting something by March to at least be said. But uh, the system, you know, we, we assume at the latest comes out holiday next year. Technically, it could be 2026. It's not like we actually know when it's coming out. But we really just need it announced. But the reason I'm getting into this is a lot of Nintendo content creators, as has been stated in all these other videos, they're struggling. Uh, the people talking about it are probably even struggling just a little bit, uh, even if not to the point that they're concerned about anything. And my channel is no exception. Uh, my channel has certainly seen a struggle. If you wonder why this year in particular, you've seen a lot of Switch 2 videos, especially early in the year, but now you know, you're starting to see them come back a little bit. Well, because that's what's getting views. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, our first 10,000 view video on the channel was yesterday. And what was that video about? About leaks about Nintendo Switch 2 from shipping data. Uh, turns out that that's what people are interested in. Like I've made multiple Echoes of Wisdom videos. None of them have cracked 10,000 views, not since the actual reveal of the game. So it's it's been interesting out there that people uh, seem to only be looking for Nintendo Switch 2 content. And that's despite the fact that we have a bunch of games coming from Jamboree to Mario and Luigi to Echoes of Wisdom. Just the interest level in people searching for content on YouTube is significantly lower for those games. And obviously was significantly lower for the games before them. Princess Peach Showtime or because uh, I made a little bit of content around that. I even did some live streams on it. Very low interest. Uh, I, you know, stuff like, gosh, what was it earlier? Uh, you know, Endless Ocean. There was just very little interest in that as well. Uh, we try content on different things as Nintendo content creators, and we have to gauge our audience interest compared to our own. And if uh, we're doing this for a living, which is something we don't like to talk about a lot, that means we're supporting ourselves, possibly supporting a family. I have three children and a fiance. She works full time too, but uh, I technically am what they say. What what was that term? The the breadwinner? Is that what they call it? Like I'm the one that like makes the most income in the house. So like we're most reliant. You like that's usually what the breadwinner means, right? Like it's not the other person doesn't work. It's just that. It's, you know, you're reliant on the breadwinner. The breadwinner is the primary provider to the family. Uh, so I, you know, the, there's a huge reliance on on the, on the revenue in my house to support my kids. We got school coming up, um, you know, all the fees associated with that. But my whole thing is it has been a struggle. Uh, revenue is down. Uh, viewership is way down. Uh, I'm not just talking from the Tears of the Kingdom stuff, because obviously I don't expect everything to do what Tears of the Kingdom did, where you're getting 50 to 150,000 views every video. No, but even after Tears of the Kingdom, we were maintaining like 15 to 20,000 views on videos quite regularly. Maybe it was just because of Mario Wonder. Maybe it was just hype around the holidays, or maybe even just hype for the Switch 2 stuff that was supposed to maybe get announced in March. Or it's rumored to be announced last March. Uh, so maybe we just got lucky to hold on to viewership uh, for a little bit after Tears of the Kingdom. But this year has just been a different story. We've actually had a game coming out practically every single month, but none of these games are like driving massive sales. They're also not driving massive. Like Paper Mario Thousand Your Door was hype, but like people just weren't really watching a ton of content on it for some reason. Maybe because they just know what the game is and didn't really need to. Uh, I don't know. But I'm just sitting back and going, yeah, we're struggling. Um, and it's tough. It's tough out there. If you're a Nintendo content creator that's used to the massive boon of the entire Switch era, this has been probably a pretty bad year for you. Uh, I didn't get to enjoy the massive boom of most of the Switch era. I've been making content uh, since late 2017 pretty much on my channel consistently, but I didn't really get a big boon from most of it. In fact, I'm actually one of those YouTubers that most of my success began last year. If we're just completely honest, like, yeah, I had a channel, had about 70,000 subscribers uh, before things really picked up for me, but uh, my viewership was in the toilet, man. We, we were actually doing really good one year, one year. We were doing really, really, really good, uh, and then we got hacked, and that changed a lot at the channel after we got hacked. All our momentum was killed. We were blacklisted in searches, and it took a long time to get it back, <laughs> About a year. Uh, the hacking happened in October of 2021. So 2021 was actually the first year my channel finally had some positive momentum. I wasn't doing it for a living. I had a different job. But we had momentum, and it seemed like we might go somewhere. 
Then we got hacked in October and it all stopped. Um, and it just took us a long time to get back to where we wanted to be over a year, really until Tears of the Kingdom stuff. So Tears of the Kingdom obviously took the channel to new heights and made my gamble to go full time after my hours were cut at my old job uh, seem worth it. And I went on to actually make, you know, I'm not going to tell you the exact figures, but I ended up making more money in 2023 than I made in 2022 for my old job with YouTube revenue combined in. So I was, that's a pretty successful year, a pretty successful gamble. Uh, but things are different now because all, most of my revenue coming in, again, I don't know how detailed people get here, but most of my revenue coming in now is not after taxes. It's before taxes. So I'm making more money, but I got to pay more taxes, of course, because not only is it not personal revenue anymore, it's business revenue. So you got business taxes, uh, which turns out are significantly higher. And I guess I've always known are significantly higher uh, than normal taxes. So my actual take home last year was probably less than the year before, but it at least was in the ballpark of being reasonable, especially for a gamble for your first full time year on YouTube. Like, damn, it's my first full time year. Uh, that's pretty successful. So Let's go ahead and run away with it here in 2024. And we got off to a pretty hot start, mostly because of Switch 2 videos, because there was a lot of hype surrounding March. And then the bomb was dropped that the system is not going to be revealed in March and has been delayed. And that pretty much killed my channel and killed a lot of other Nintendo channels because there wasn't any exciting games announced. And we kept hoping when we get to June, all we got to do is get to June. We just got to get to that next Nintendo Direct and we'll be all right. And it came. And that Direct was a banger, right? Metroid Prime 4, Echoes of Wisdom. I mean, th those announcements alone are massive. But that Metroid Prime 4 is in 2025, which means we're probably not going to get any news about it the rest of the year. So we can only cover a couple of things off the trailer, a couple of comparisons. And then after that, that's kind of the end of your Metroid Prime 4 coverage because there's not going to be any new news. Uh, Echoes of Wisdom is exciting. It is, is a top-down Zelda starring Zelda, and it's just not exciting people originally. Maybe it's starting to grow a bit, but it's not exciting people originally as much as prior Zelda games had. So it doesn't affect my coverage, of course. I'm a Zelda guy. We're going to keep covering it. But it's been a struggle on YouTube this year. Uh, everyone's views are down. Now, I talked a little bit about how that's happening because there just isn't a lot of the tentpole exciting games out there, but it's also just because it's a transition year. And I think I always knew a transition year was coming. I know for me, it's like a bit starker because I literally have only been full time for like a little over a year uh, and seeing a massive decline after a successful first year is tough. But I said this on the live stream when I talked about this and I'll say this now. One, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Uh, not until like June of 2026, I gave myself sort of a almost two year window to kind of turn things around. I think that's enough time for me to really see what's going on out there. See if switch two is coming out. See if even when switch two comes out, am I going to be one of the channels that catches the wave of excitement for it and ends up growing and, 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 and being a lot more stable as a channel and thus being able to look at this as a future career? Because look, I'm not, you know, a 21 year old coming fresh out of college or, or 18 coming right out of high school or something. I'm I'm a 38-year-old man, uh, and I got a family, and I want to be able to retire one day, even if that day still is like, you know, I'm not really thinking about it right now, but I figure 25 years from now or so, maybe 30 by the time I'm 70, you know, I, maybe I want to finally, like, step back a little bit, even if I'm still making content. I don't know who the hell wants to watch a 70-year-old man talking about video games, but even if I was... Uh, it would be nice to step back a little bit and enjoy retirement and do vacations more and, and all that stuff at some point in my life. So these are the kind of things I got to think about. Plus I got my kids and, and all that to take care of. So I always have to make the best choice for my family and the best choice for my family was the choice I actually had made going full-time on YouTube because it made me more available for them. It made me more available to my children. It made me around more. I'm my own boss. I could adjust anything I'm doing to fit around everyone's schedule rather than having to try to just miss things and can only go some things, can only be there sometimes because, hey, I have a work schedule and I don't get to control that schedule, right? I'm working a nine to five. I'm working, you know, an eight to four. I'm working an overnight, right? Or I'm on call. So I already did like a 12-hour shift today and then I'm on call and next, you know, up at three in the morning dealing with some IT bullshit. 
Uh, as anyone who's worked in IT probably understands what that could be like, especially if you were working from home doing IT. Yeah, you end up getting put on call a lot and have to show up at some odd hours. At least I did. So I look at this as an opportunity. While I was serious about contemplating quitting because I needed to make the best choice for my family, the best choice for my family is to actually make this work because I don't want to go back to not being there for my children's formative years. My daughter's 13. She turns 14 later this year. She's going to be a year from now. We're going to be talking about her, you know, getting her temps and learning to drive. Uh, you know, I, I have an 11 year old son. Uh, you know, he's just entering middle school. I have an eight year old son uh, who, who turns nine here at the end of this month. And, you know, I got to think about him as well. And, you know, what he's going to be entering middle school here in the next couple of years. And he's getting older and getting into sports and, and everything else. He's going to be the sports kid. Uh, my my oldest son looks like he's going to be like the band choir kid, which is totally awesome. I love that. Uh, and my daughter, I don't know. She's in band, but she's got a lot of different interests as well. And I want to be able to be there for all of that. And I realize the best way for me to be there for everything is to make this work. Uh, this has to work if I want to be the person I want to be for them. And it's not just about my availability. It's about my mental health. I love this job. You know how fortunate I am that I get to Wake up every day and just talk Nintendo, talk video games with you guys. Uh, it's awesome. This is one of the greatest jobs anyone can have if you're passionate about it. Obviously, if you're not and you're just forcing yourself to do it for the money, uh, that's that's pretty depressing. And you probably hate yourself. Uh, it's probably why a lot of YouTubers, even really big ones, have like quit because they found like, hey, I'm just doing this for the money. I don't actually like it. Uh, I actually do like making YouTube content. I don't have an issue with my passion. I don't have an issue with my drive. I have just an issue with that. This is like reality. I got to be able to support people while pushing. So we're committed for the next couple of years. Obviously any massive major stark drop off, like my videos start getting like a thousand views a video for like three straight months. I mean, that could, that could change plans. I don't foresee that happening because even my lows are still higher than what my highest videos used to be, uh, you know, two, two and a half years ago. So like even my like floor <laughs> has technically raised a little bit, probably thanks to that Tears of the Kingdom boom. But, you know, we need to get that floor raised even higher. So I'm not here to ask you guys to give me money or any of that stuff. What I am here to say is that be nice to everyone. <laughs> I've been noticing a lot of negative comments. And I, I look, I'm not just talking about my videos. You guys are going to hate away and every Switch 2 video I drop or Every Echoes of Wisdom video, oh, why are you covering this? This video isn't, this game's not very good. Oh, why are you talking about Jamboree? Nobody cares about Mario Party. And look, I get it. People are tired of certain types of it. And people are tired of Switch 2 videos because we just want the damn thing announced. I'm with you. But Switch 2 videos are also like what get views. I just showed you guys. My first 10,000 view video in August, which, by the way, I was getting significantly higher views last month covering Zelda, yeah, it was about Switch 2. I, I feel like the audience has a disconnect with the creator. You guys, your job is just to show up and enjoy the videos. Uh, bitch if you want, praise if you want, be excited if you want. Uh, but us content creators, especially once we get to the point that we're doing it for a living, and you could argue that was the mistake. You should have never did it for a living. Yeah, but if we don't, then we can't give you the content that you enjoy so much as often. You know, some of you guys love my my three streams a week plus my podcast. Some of you guys love my daily content. You can't get that if I don't do it full-time because it takes full-time work to do it. And I don't even just mean like 40 hours. Most of us content creators are putting in way more than 40 hours a week. So just to have this earnest conversation, I want you to be nice to everyone. I don't care if it's Switch Force or Nintendo Land or beat em ups or RGT85 seems to actually be doing pretty well. He's slowly, even though, you know, he's a, a non-Nintendo YouTuber that's clearly a Nintendo YouTuber, He's has this year become more of a variety content creator and found little pockets and niches he can hit in to still be pretty good and still grow his channel. And I'm, I'm really happy for him that he's been able to do that. But I'm a Nintendo channel. Uh, just through and through, that's what we're going to be talking about. You're not going to see a ton of PlayStation or Xbox. Like, I've thought about expanding the channel, thought about rebranding the channel, None of that's really what I want to do. I'm most passionate about Nintendo. That's my niche. And sometimes Nintendo's just not going to have the goods that drive the interest. By the way, this isn't me dissing Nintendo's ear. This is actually 
for me, one of Nintendo's best years of the Switch generation, just in terms of like what I'm interested in. Man, uh, my Echoes of Wisdom hype is, is hitting Tears of the Kingdom level, baby. Let's freaking go. It's so exciting. Like they're evolving top-down Zelda in the same way they did the 3D Zelda. And I didn't even think they could do that. Like I couldn't even conceptualize how they could like Breath of the Wild a 2D Zelda. And that's what they're doing. And that is insane to me. And it looks so good. And they're doing it with a playable Zelda, which makes it all kind of make sense because it breaks away from Link and lets you focus more on magic abilities. And those magic abilities are what's enabling all this amazing gameplay. That's probably part of the reason I couldn't imagine Link, a top-down Link game being like able to do this because it didn't make as much sense. But it makes so much sense with Zelda. And ah, oh, man, I'm so excited. Like Echoes of Wisdom, Day one, we're doing a launch live stream. It's going to be, ah, oh, man, it's going to be so much fun. I can't wait. And regardless of people, even watch my Echoes of Wisdom Con, go ahead. Keep having like 3,000 people watch those videos. I'm going to still make them because I'm passionate about it and I love it and I want to make content. I'm passionate about not just the content that makes money. And I'm going to keep doing that because... I firmly believe that's why so many people subscribed in the first place. I can't just focus on the videos that make money. If that was the case, every day we're just making Switch 2 videos. And I know some of you believe that's all we do, but check my channel. That, that ain't the case. If some hype news comes out about, you know, say, uh, Legend ZA, because I am excited for Legend ZA. Yeah, I'm going to make a video about it, even if... That video gets like 2,000 views because I hardly have any Pokemon fans on my channel, which is rightfully so because when I talk about Pokemon, I sound like an idiot. <laughs> In fact, I should probably start making fun of myself at the beginning of my Pokemon videos, how little I actually know about Pokemon, just to preface it so people don't go down in the comments and be like, you're just a fake fan. Look at this fake Pokemon fan. And wrong about that. <laughs> and look, I get it. Like if I mess up with Zelda, you know, I used to be like a Zelda expert, so I deserve some of that criticism, but like, hey, Pokemon, come on, I gotta get a break, yeah. But I guess in the end, I just want people to be nice to content creators. We're all just trying to do what we need to do to get by. I'm trying to catch the wave, uh, and that's pretty much my story. I, I wanna catch the wave of Switch 2, because uh, I, I wanna raise that floor of viewership where even during the down times, we still have a floor that is sustainable uh, for the, you know, my family and everything else and for me to realistically keep doing this right now i would say it's arguably not sustainable but uh i've been very fortunate um, a lot of you guys come to my live streams and without prompt without any asking suddenly boom we'll, we'll get super chats and gifted members and that's really been helping carry the, the load along with sponsorships and just know that all of us nintendo youtubers aren't going to make it some of us aren't going to make it uh, to the Switch 2. Some are going to shut down. Uh, even when Switch 2 is announced, that's not necessarily a be-all cure. Uh, a lot of channels still won't be able to catch that wave. Brand new channels might come out of nowhere and suddenly hit a million subscribers out of nowhere. Uh, channels like mine might not catch the wave at all. and We're pretty much the same size we are now as we are two years from now. Uh, no, no surprise. like that, that could be the case. We don't know. Uh, what I do know is I'll be here till June of 2026 trying to make it happen. And at that point, we'll have to make a, a, another decision with the channel because I do want to retire one day. So uh, you guys are awesome. <laughs> I do want to thank you for being here. Uh, kind of a weird video, kind of an all over the place, off the cuff craziness. Uh, but that's how we do it here sometimes. You come to my live streams. This is what it is. You get raw prime. You get some funny moments. You get some serious moments. Uh, you get some dancing and some silliness and a whole bunch of stuff in between. Uh, some voice changing as well, like... <laughs> How you guys doing now? You like me now? Like, yeah, we, we do some funny, silly things on streams. I hope you decide to come later. Today, we got a Tears of the Kingdom challenge stream later today, if you made it to the end. Uh, I, I'll try to set it up here after I get this video up so you guys can sort of plan to come when that's going to happen because I do want to... Uh, we're trying to do a challenge. I don't know if I'm going to actually beat the challenge, and you guys can add more stuff on top with your super chats. You can add like additional things I have to do. Uh, but we're just going to have some fun playing Tears of the Kingdom regardless uh, because, hey... I love Zelda, so why not have a Zelda stream on a Sunday? It makes sense to me. All right, guys. I am Nathaniel RoboJamps from Nintendo Prime. This is at the end. I like to feel like we're just getting started. Catch you in the next video.